Today I'm excited to take a look at a Linux distribution that I've never actually taken a look at on camera. And the reason I haven't taken a look at it on camera before is in the six years of my YouTube channel, this distribution actually was dormant for that entire length of time until just recently. And the distribution I'm talking about is Ed Ubuntu. Now Ed Ubuntu was one of the original flavors of Ubuntu. It saw its initial release similar to Ubuntu started I think late 2004. Ed Ubuntu started sometime in 2005 and it was one of the main flavors of Ubuntu for many of the, the early years that I was a desktop Linux user. I'd actually tried some of those older versions of Ed Ubuntu back in the day. It used the GNOME desktop environment in its earlier version and then once Ubuntu moved from GNOME 2 to Unity, Ed Ubuntu also used the old Unity desktop environment. But then Ed Ubuntu in 2014 put out their last release. And in the last nine years, Ed Ubuntu pretty much ceased to exist. Except for 2304, this recent cycle of Ubuntu releases saw the rebirth of Ed Ubuntu. It uses now the GNOME desktop environment. And I'm excited to take a look at this reborn at Ubuntu. And before I actually take a look at the distribution itself. I do want to mention the website here, edubuntu.org. There's actually not much information here on this website. Really, it's just this home page here that gives you some blurbs, you know, some, some sound bites, essentially. You can see that edubuntu, if you didn't guess by the name, is a stable, secure, and privacy-conscious option for schools. So it's a Linux distribution designed for the classroom. You can see it has a huge ecosystem of software being Ubuntu-based. Of course, you would expect that. And of course, it's free and open source software, and it's got a mission statement and a link to how you can contribute, and then not much else. It's got the download button. And I've gone ahead, I've downloaded the ISO, and I'm going to spin up a quick virtual machine. I'm going to run through an installation and do a quick first look of Edubuntu 23.04. So I've created this virtual machine. I gave this VM six gigs of RAM. I gave it two threads of my 24 thread CPU. So I'm gonna go ahead and choose try or install Ed Ubuntu here from the boot menu. And I really like the, uh, the splash screen and the logo. It's kind of a slightly modified Ubuntu logo instead of having the, the three circles, kind of like three people holding hands, like one of them was throwing their hand up maybe for a high five, I don't know, but that was a really cool logo. And it boots us directly into a live environment where the Ubiquity installer launches. So they're still using the older uh, Ubuntu's Ubiquity installer. Of course, you, know, you guys know the recent mainline version of Ubuntu moved to a new installer that is based on Flutter, but this is still using Ubiquity, it looks like. So I'm going to go ahead and install Ed Ubuntu. And the language English US is the default, and that is correct for me. So I'm just going to click continue here. And then normal installation or minimal installation. I'll choose the normal installation. Uh, download updates while installing Ed Ubuntu. That is ticked on by default, which is good. Install third party software for graphics and Wi Fi drivers. Let's tick that on, especially if you're installing this on physical hardware, especially a laptop. You really are going to want those third party drivers especially for Wi-Fi, and if you have an NVIDIA card, you definitely want the third-party drivers for your graphics card. And then click Continue. Then we come to the partitioning. We can erase the disk and give Ed Ubuntu the entire disk, which is what I'm going to choose, or you can choose something else and manually partition so the drives yourself if that's what you want to do. I'm going to go ahead and click Install now, and it's going to warn me that it's about to format the drive and write to the disk. I'm going to click Continue. And it's going to ask about my time zone. It has correctly chosen the central time zone in the U.S. for me, so I'm just going to click Continue. Then we need to create our username. I'm going to call my user DT. The computer host name, I'm going to call this Ed Ubuntu dash vert. Just so it's descriptive, I'll know it's my Ed Ubuntu virtual machine in case I ever SSH into this VM for some reason. Then we need to create a strong and complicated password for the DT user. And then repeat the strong and complicated password. And then login automatically is ticked off. I'm gonna leave that ticked off. I want to have to enter a password to get into my computers. For privacy reasons, you should always have to enter a password to get into a computer. So require my password to log in, I'll leave that. And then use Active Directory, I'll leave that ticked off. And then I'm just gonna click Continue. And now we're going to get a slideshow, and this portion of the installation typically takes about 5 to 10 minutes on my hardware, so I'm going to step away, grab me a cup of coffee. I'll be back once the installation has completed. 
and the installation has completed. That took about 15 minutes or so, so a little longer to install than like mainline Ubuntu, but that is kind of to be expected really for a couple of reasons. Mainline Ubuntu is a very minimal installation. It doesn't install a lot of software if you ever installed Ubuntu on any machine. You know, it installs the basic programs you need to just get started. Ed Ubuntu is going to install a lot more software because it's for schools, it's for education, it's going to install a full office suite and a lot of graphics programs, a lot of science programs, math programs, games, trivia, you know, a lot of stuff was installed. And plus, I also ticked on the box that said update while installing. So there were probably some updates as well. So now I'm going to click restart now and let's check out the fresh installed at Ubuntu 2304. And we come to our login manager, and of course this is GDM, which is GNOME's uh, login manager. So let's go ahead and log in. And I've logged in for the very first time, and much like mainline Ubuntu, when you log in for the very first time, you have the option to connect your online accounts, your Google or Nextcloud or Microsoft accounts. And I could especially see uh, being able to connect to uh, like your Nextcloud account or your Google account for uh, Gmail or Google Docs or whatever it happens to be, I could understand why uh, this would be very important for Ed Ubuntu to have this in it. I'm going to skip all that for now. Would we like to send information to Canonical? So this is like crash reports and telemetry to help them improve the distribution. Yes, since they asked me nicely, I will leave that ticked on. And then privacy, uh, it's uh, location services that's turned off for educational purposes since you're putting this on classroom machines. I probably would leave that turned off in a school environment. And then you're ready to go. It tells you some of the software that is available in the Ubuntu Software Center, uh, but I don't know what is installed out of the box, so I'm not gonna go uh, immediately to the Software Center and start installing stuff. Let's see what is already here. So let me go ahead and go back into the menu system here and actually just take a look because uh, obviously we have a lot of the standard programs you would expect to be here, but then we have these subcategories that you normally don't have on a Linux distribution, such as the art category, which is a lot of graphics software. So you actually have GNU Image Manipulation Program. Of course, that's the GIMP. GIMP is for uh, raster graphics, and then you have Inkscape for scalable vector graphics. You have Tux Paint, which is a nice little painting tool. You have LibreCAD for a CAD program as well. So there is actually a lot of stuff here. Let me go ahead and open Tux Paint. It's a program I don't get to play with that often. I do like the little music that plays uh, when you open it. Yeah, and let's draw something. Now, my artistic skills are not great. Can I change a shape? Uh, what is that? Oh, sure. All right. Yeah, I don't know too much about Tux Paint, so I'm going to go ahead and close this. Yes, I'm done. Yes, save it. No, don't bother saving it. Yeah, I don't think I need to save that one. So a lot of graphics program here in Ed Ubuntu. We also had Ed Ubuntu Info and Administration. Now this is very important because well, we have a link to Ask Ubuntu if we need support questions about the Linux distribution itself. But we also have Ed Ubuntu Menu Administration. And what this is, if I click on it, it's listing all the .desktop files. So these are the programs that are desktop applications. Because there are desktop applications, they should appear in your menu systems, your standard menu systems. Well, what you could do, especially since this is for kids in a classroom, you could actually choose to show these or not to show these. So select applications to hide for any non-administrator user. So unless you have sudo privileges or root privileges, you don't actually get to see these. So like Ask Ubuntu. That normally would not show up. Now I do have sudo privileges, my DT user, so I got to see that. But uh, if somebody had to log in under a, a non-administrative account, like a guest account or something, they would not be able to see that Ask Ubuntu desktop entry here. If I go back into the menu system, they would not see that. So that is very cool. That is actually really powerful that they have some of this stuff like the system monitoring and they probably have a lot of the dangerous stuff like the disk utility, GNOME disk, which could partition a drive. The kids that are going to use this distribution, they obviously don't need access to that. They don't need access to the terminal uh, because, again, they could really destroy the machine if they entered the wrong command. So that is a really nice touch. Going back into the menu system, some of the uh, programs that jump out to me, Endeavor, which I believe is a note-taking program. Let's see. 
task will appear today. So this is like a scheduler. Uh, I, okay, it's a scheduling program, an organizer, essentially. Endeavor 43. So that obviously would be very useful in a classroom setting. Let's get back into the menu system. And we have a game section. And these aren't games necessarily just for fun. A lot of these are probably educational kind of games. So we have Blinken is made by KDE. See the KDE lo logo here. Let's see. Uh, is it some kind of memory game? Let's see. Let's do level one. Okay. I guess it just shows us a color, and then we got to pick the color. Yeah, I don't know. I'm probably going to be really bad at that game, but that is what a lot of these educational games are, especially for younger children. It's all about uh, memory retention and being able to, I didn't mean to launch that game again. It's, it's all about uh, working on the memory, right? Can you remember what you were just shown? This is Jigzo, which I've never actually heard of this game. It says, space brings bottom pieces to the front. Click or press enter. Sure, why not? So it's another memory game, right? It's going to show us some pictures, I'm assuming. And then I've got to put the picture back together, all right? Uh, that's not where that goes. That's where that goes. Oh, my goodness. I did not expect to play games today <laughs> when I decided to do this video. Oh, I'm getting pretty close, though. Not bad. I'm much better at this game than I was at the previous one. Yeah. As you can see, for young children, this would be uh, very appropriate. Now, obviously, Edubuntu is actually designed for children of all ages, from very young, you know, kindergarten or in like preschool level, all the way to, you know, teenagers, you know, high schoolers, because cause obviously things like GIMP and Inkscape, and LibreOffice, you know, that's going to be uh, mainly for older children, right? Young children are probably not going to be creating scalable vector graphics images inside Inkscape, although that would be fantastic if they did. Another educational tool we have here is G-Brainy. G-Brainy is an old school Linux program. It's been around for many, many years, and it's a great educational tool. You can see if I go to help about gbrainy 2.4.6 this is a brain teaser game for fun and to keep your brain trained and you have various options on the type of games you can do logic calculation memory verbal let's do verbal which of the following words is closest to the meaning of phlegmatic answer a b c or d so our options for what is most similar to phlegmatic is authentic calm tense or clever i'm going to choose tense that was the incorrect answer b calm was the answer all right i can't go out on a losing effort let's try one more given the relationship between the two words below which word has the same relationship to numismatics the words are pediatrics and children and we have to type the answer children <laughs> that's over two you know what i'm going to close out g brainy i'm i'm embarrassing myself Back to the menu system, another uh, educational tool that's very popular on Linux, G-Compress. Taking a minute to load, so you can tell this is for younger children. A uh, really cool game. Those of you that have small children, G-Compress is a, a really neat tool. You, do you want to download the following external assets? I'm not going to do that on this video, but put your favorite activities here by clicking on the sun at the top of the right of that activity. Uh, Let's go to ABCs, and you can see baby keyboard, a baby word processor, draw some letters, alphabet sequence. So a young kid needed to figure out how to remember the order of their ABCs. You can see we're missing some sound files. I really can't do anything without downloading the other assets. I'm going to skip all that for now. Also in the menu, we have a submenu for language and learning, and some of the programs in there include Calibre. Calibre is a standard program on Linux as well. It's actually a program I usually install on all of my computers. It manages your ebook library, like your EPUB files and things like that. For those of you that still have like an old school Kindle or whatever e-reader you have, it'll manage that library for you. Also under language and learning, we have the ebook editor, the ebook viewer. So, you know, if you need to read those, right? And then Gobby. I have never heard of Gobby. Let's see what that is. Before we start, a few options need to be configured. So your username, your user color, remote connections, authentication. I don't really want to do all of that on camera. Let's view. Oh, and will it actually tell me what kind of program this is? It says connect to server. 
So it requires internet access. So I'm not sure if this is something for educational purposes, because obviously in a school setting, you probably don't want your kids um, connecting to certain things on the internet. So I'm not sure what Gobby is. I guess I could look it up really quickly. We have Firefox as the default web browser on the system as well. Let's go ahead and launch Firefox. If I double click, we'll make it full screen. And let's just search for Gobby. What are the odds that that's actually going to, well, it returned Hobby Lobby. <laughs> that's not what I wanted. <laughs> Gobby. Gobby is a free software collaborative real-time editor available on Windows and Unix-like platforms. A real-time editor. So I guess that's a, okay, like a collaborative tool, like if you know, multiple people need to work on a project. Oh, okay, I could see how that would be appropriate for a distribution like Ed Ubuntu. Also in the menu, we have LibreOffice. We have the entire LibreOffice suite. We have Base, Calc, Draw, Impress, Math, and I'm sure Writer is here, but it's probably pinned to the dock. When you pin something to the dock in GNOME, it goes out of the menu. So there is Writer. We probably are going to use the spreadsheet enough. We could go ahead and try to move it over here if I could drag it. It's not going to let me, you know, I guess it's kind of picky where I put them. I can move LibreOffice Impress over here as well. That's the presentation software. I use that a lot. And personally, I'd probably pin it to the dock. Uh, we have GNOME Maps. We have Marble. Not sure what Marble is. Had a compass on it. Huh. So geography program, right? You get the globe. So makes sense for this sort of distribution to have something like that here. We have a mathematics category, of course, and lots of mathematical programs. Many of them look like KDE programs. A lot of them start with a K, such as K-Algebra. Let's go ahead and launch that. And you have the calculator, 2D graph, 3D graph, dictionary. If I go to help about K-Algebra, this is K-Algebra version 22.12.3. I'm going to close that out because I'm definitely not going to be doing any algebra on camera. We have the science subcategory and several science related tools. Stellarium is a standard program on Linux for astronomy. Uh, atomics, I'm assuming, would be uh, for like your uh, chemical uh, periodic tables and things like that. It says guide the atoms through the maze to form molecules. Huh? Well, it's kind of like a game. I was not expecting that. Let's see, about atomics, a puzzle game about atoms and molecules. Very cool. And we also have a social sciences category, and that's going to be Gramps and K geography, K geography is pretty obvious what it would be about, but what is Gramps? I'm seeing so many cool, like educational programs that I've never seen before. And this is a family tree program. Okay, that makes sense. Gramps is a software package designed for genealogical research. Although similar to other genealogical programs, Gramps offers some unique and powerful features. I go to help and about. This is Gramps 5.1.5. Hmm. If I go back to the menu and go to the second page here, we do have a technology category as well. It looks like mostly games uh, for technology stuff. K-Touch, I'm assuming that would be for uh, learning to type. Yeah, the typewriter training program. Very cool. Let's see what else was in that technology subcategory. At Tux Typing, so we got a couple of typing programs. And then we have K-Turtle. What is K-Turtle? So it looks like a lot of the uh, educational games, especially for smaller children, are from the KDE suite of software. KTurtle is an educational programming environment that aims to make learning how to program as easy as possible. So it's teaching kids to program. Nice. And that is a, a quick look at most of the software that is installed on the system. Everything else that's installed is like your standard GNOME stuff, the GNOME desktop environment, which you you guys already know about the file manager in Firefox. They're using Geary for the email client. We've got our calendar here as well. We've got the GNOME calculator, which is important on an educational distribution for school. You're probably going to need like the advanced calculator you're going to need some scientific functions and the good thing about the gnome calculator is it is very full featured it's got everything you could possibly want in a calculator and the other big thing in a classroom setting a lot of times you're going to need to be taking notes and they do have notes here so I go to about notes. This is notes 40.1. This is the simple notebook for GNOME. The good thing about notes is you can actually keep multiple notebooks of notes inside notes and you know with email you know you could 
email each other your, your own notes or their notes. And then with if you're syncing to something like Nextcloud, you know, it's just again, I'm, I'm really impressed with this distribution as far as a complete and total package for the classroom and the fact that you have such fine control over it with the administrative privileges on, on what appears in the menu system because you can have all these programs installed but they don't necessarily have to be accessible to your students all the time so you can turn on and off for example the web browser do they really need access to the internet most of the time probably not you may want to tick on and off you know allowing them access to firefox for example Overall, I'm really impressed with Edubuntu 23.04. It's been nine years since the last release, so I'm really happy that it has returned, and I hope it's here to stay because I do think Edubuntu, it, it fills a void, right? It serves a real need in the Linux community. Now, before I go, I need to thank a few special people. I need to thank the producers of this episode. Gabe James Maxim, my homies too bald, Matt Mimit, Mitchell Paul, Royal West, Armor Dragon, Bash Potato, Chuck Commander, Angry, George Lee, Marstrom, Methos, Nate, Erjan, Paul, Peace, Arch, and Dwarf, Polytech, Realities for Less, Red Prophet, Roland, Tools, Devler, Willie, Zenabit, these guys. They're my highest tiered patrons over on Patreon without these guys. This quick look at Edubuntu 23.04 would not have been possible. The show is also brought to you by each and every one of these fine ladies and gentlemen. All these names you're seeing on the screen right now. These are all my supporters over on Patreon. I don't have any corporate sponsors. I'm sponsored by you guys, the community. If you like my work and want to see more videos about Linux and free and open source software, subscribe to DistroTube over on Patreon. All right, guys. Peace. How can I suck so bad at some of these games that are made for preschoolers?